Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome you to my very first uh, double feature movie review. As I talked about in my vlog and the previous vlog, I would try something a little bit different. I will try to do um, review reviews, that is, um, of films, newer films, and maybe some older films that are similar in ways, and you know, and try to review them together. And for this first edition of the double feature review I'm going to be reviewing Lone Survivor and American Sniper since these films are very similar they're about obviously Navy SEALs they're based on true stories based on books uh, they came out um, around the same time different years or one year apart but around the same time similar films um, so I wanted to sit down and review these and of course first I will be reviewing Lone Survivor since it came out first and I will say that I do enjoy Lone Survivor um, I did get a chance to see it in the theaters with my dad uh, which was pretty cool and it's a very uh, I think it's a very good film um, I think it's one of Mark Wahlberg's best movies I know a lot of people are kind of uh, iffy on Mark Wahlberg personally I like him I do enjoy a lot of his movies um, I like stuff like Shooter and Two Guns, Four Brothers, The Italian Job, this movie, um, The Big Hit I really liked, Corrupter with Chow Yun Fat I enjoyed. Um, so I do like Mark Wahlberg as an actor. Um, and I know again a lot of people are iffy on him, but I want to bring that up because if people, you know, say, well, Mark Wahlberg can't act or Mark Wahlberg is no good, just go ahead and watch Lone Survivor because I thought he did a really good job. I thought he put on a really good performance, and um, I do enjoy some of the other actors in the film. I enjoy Ben Foster, I enjoyed Emil Hirsch, and I enjoyed uh, Eric Bana. I couldn't think of his name. Uh, the other guy, Taylor Kitsch, I know a lot of people don't like him. I This is the only film I've seen him in, as far as I know. Um, so I can't really base a judgment upon him just yet but I thought he was okay in this film it wasn't you know anything spectacular for me because obviously you know Mark Wahlberg was the star that's where the focus was for this movie and uh, you know that's just how it is sometimes but um, for those who are late to the party or don't know what Lone Survivor is about it is based on a true story about a failed mission um, that happened in two. 2005, it doesn't say it on here, but it is 2005, because I recently saw the uh, Marcus Luttrell, who I'll get into more in a second here, he posted something about it being 10 years, that's right, it, it was 2005. It was this failed mission where a group of four Navy SEALs went in to uh, capture a Al-Qaeda leader, and what happened was they were compromised, their position was given away, and... They had a, uh, a skirmish with the Al-Qaeda members. And in the course of this, you know, skirmish, all but one person was killed. Hence, you know, the title, Lone Survivor. And the title of the book, who would be Marcus Luttrell, played by Mark Wahlberg here. And, um, you know, he was severely injured during the course of this battle. He ended up getting to a village where they took him in. And they helped him and they cared for him um, until, you know, uh, U.S. forces showed up and, and got him, you know. And, uh, you know, that was the uh, the code of those people. On here it is called the uh, Pashtun Code, which that is what, you know, it is called. And it's basically if someone needs help, you help him, you know. And that's what these, these group of innocent people of innocent Middle Eastern people did. And that's the thing, like, you know, everybody says, oh, well, they're all terrorists, they're all bad. They're not all bad. You know, this movie is proof that there is still a lot of good people over there who were just caught up in this uh, this terrible thing that's been going on for, you know, the better part of, uh, you know, 15 years almost. But he ends up getting rescued and... You know, he goes on to write, you know, he wrote the book, he wrote another book, and they ended up making this movie. And Marcus Luttrell is actually in the movie. He actually plays one of the other Navy SEALs that gets killed later on because there is a, a failed attempt to rescue them. And everybody 
the whole platoon of SEALs ended up getting killed, which is very, very sad. And this is a very sad movie. Um, when I saw it in theaters, at the end, you know, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. You know, everybody was crying, everybody was emotional, because this is something that really happened. This is a true story. Um, this isn't like something like another film similar, uh, Delta Force with Chuck Norris. You know, it's not like the terrorists took over, you know, and at the end of the day, the Americans won. You know, it wasn't like that at all. You know, this was real. Now... The good part is the guy that they were after ended up getting killed, so at least, you know, we got what we needed out of that. But, you know, uh, the three other guys on the team died, the whole other platoon died. It's very, very sad. It is a very sad story. And, you know, again, this is something that really happened, just like the next film I'm going to talk about, American Sniper. It's something that really happened. And, you know, it's just, it's definitely not the kind of movie that I would watch all the time. Um, I have seen this, I think, twice since I've um, seen it in the theater. I know I watched it. That's the neighbor. He's got a little rice burner, and he's got to ride around all fucking night and, and make noises with his car, so I apologize for that. Uh, I lost my train of thought. What the fuck was I talking about? Thanks, jerk off. Oh, yeah, I know what I was talking about. Um, I When I got this Blu-ray, um, I got this because obviously it has more features than the DVD. But it's a combo pack, so it's got both. I watched it once by myself, and then my brother wanted to watch it because he had never seen the film, and we watched it together. That's right. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely not a movie I would sit down and watch all the time because it's depressing. It's sad because, again, I'm going to keep saying this, this really happened. This isn't a movie... Like, Under Siege, where, you know, okay, yeah, good guys get killed, but it's pretend, you know, it, it's just part of the movie. No, I mean, yeah, they're actors, they're acting, but these guys really got killed, you know, in real life. You know, it's not, it's not phony at all, it's not fake. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not a movie I would watch all the time. But I, I, again, I enjoyed the film, I thought it was really well done. Uh, Peter Berg directed the film, who has a cameo as one of the other Navy SEALs, which I thought was cool. And I like him as a director, and I also like him as an actor. I enjoy Peter Berg, and I thought he did a good job directing the film. Um, was the movie perfect? No, because there was some shitty-looking CGI, like the part when the SEALs on the helicopter get killed. It looks very shitty. Um, there's a lot of shaky cam. And I know why they did it for this movie. It's because they wanted to look like you were actually there, like you were actually with these guys and saw what happened. And, you know, that I get, but I still, you know, I still don't like that because you don't need that. It's a movie, you know, and it's not just with this movie. It's with any movie. You know, you don't need shaky cam for any kind of movie whatsoever. It's, it's just not necessary, in my opinion. You don't need it at all, you know, and I'm going to keep saying that. I'm not going off on a tangent because of the the movie itself, because it, that wasn't, you know, a problem, because I still like the movie, but, you know, it is an issue with just shaky cam in general. It didn't kill the movie for me, it's just that's one thing I didn't like. Um, I thought the action sequences were done well. Um, you know, there was the battle the big battle scene where Al-Qaeda surrounded them and these guys fought their way out. I thought it was shot really well. There was a practical, you know, couple of explosions in there and it was practical gunfire. There wasn't like CGI bullet, you know, hits on the ground and, you know, it was all, it lo there was a little bit, but not like really noticeable. So I thought that was good. I thought that was well done. There was only really that big action sequence in the film. And I thought the pace was good, um, you know, because the movie... It starts out with the montage of the Navy SEALs and the training, and I thought that was a, a cool intro to the movie. Then, you know, you see them at their base. They're just going through their normal day. They know about this mission. You know, they get going. You know, all of a sudden things get fucked up. You know, there's these people that, that find them, and they can't kill them because they don't know who they are. They don't know if they're terrorists. They don't know if they're innocent. You know, then... The action's going on, and then everybody gets killed, and then Marcus Luttrell has to get out and survive, and, you know, he gets to this village, there's this little kid that helps him, which I thought was really cool, and, um, 
he actually went back and met the kid that saved his life, and I thought that was really good, you know. And then he gets rescued, and the movie ends. And I, the montage at the end, you see pictures of all the guys that got killed. You know, you you saw Marcus Luttrell today with his kids and everything, which was nice. So yeah, uh, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Like I said, it's not one that I would sit down and watch all the time because it is a sad movie. It is a depressing movie. But every once in a while, you know, I'll pop it in and check it out because I do enjoy Lone Survivor. Now, the only, like, other issues, you know, again, I know people like Mark Wahlberg. There are people that don't like Mark Wahlberg. I said I enjoy him, you know, as I said earlier. But, you know, at this point, I'm really kind of tired of seeing him because this came out last year, 2014. He was also in uh, Transformers Age of Extinction, which I have not seen, but I heard was shitty. And he was also in The Gambler, which I heard was a decent movie. Um, and I know... It's like every year he's doing like two, three, four movies, and I get it, you know, because guys that I like, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, those guys used to do that, but it's just like Mark Wahlberg is everywhere, and you know, you hear all this stuff like how he can be a douchebag and everything, and that's just not cool. I know, I don't know how he is personally, because I've never met him, but I've seen like articles where he's a douchebag and all this, but whatever. And another thing, uh, Marcus Luttrell, the the Navy SEAL, the lone survivor. I know that he is always on like Facebook and Twitter and social media and he's doing all these speeches and stuff. That's great and if you want to get your story out there and you want to help other people, that's awesome, you know. But I don't like because I don't like stuff like recently he was talking about, you know, all this shit that's going on with ISIS and how they're coming here and they're already here and all this other shit. I know he made comments recently about how if they show up at his house, he'll kill them. And, you know, and I just, I don't like that kind of stuff. Like, I understand that, okay, you went through hell. Okay, I get that. And I'm sorry that you had to do that. I'm sorry that your friends got killed. And I'm sorry that that had to happen to you. But when you're on the internet and stuff like that, saying how you're going to, you know, if you guys show up, I'll kill you. And, you know, all these other comments he's making about, like, gun control and stuff. That's just, like, it's just too much. I think that's just too much. And I know he's not the only one that does it. I know other celebrities, because he's a celebrity. People know who he is, you know. I know other celebrities do it, and it's just annoying. And I'm not saying that, well, it's okay for him to do it. I'm just saying it's just annoying for everybody to do it. But, you know, speaking of this movie, you know, I just wanted to say that. You know, because it's it's like every time I get on, you know, I used to follow him on Facebook, but not anymore because I just kept seeing all that. And I don't, I don't like all that. You know, I don't like that shit. It's just, it's annoying. I don't want to see it. You know, that's just me personally. I know that sounds, well, people are going to say, well, you're an asshole because, you know, he fought for his country. I'm not talking about that. You know, I'm, if I ever met Marcus Luttrell, I would shake his hand and thank him because that's how I am with all vets. You know, and again, that's the route that I'm trying to go. So, there you go. But, overall, I thought Lone Survivor was a really good movie. Um, you know, again, not one that I would watch all the time because it's just a depressing film. You know, it's a depressing movie, and it's sad. You know, that's, that's about it. But I thought it was good. I thought they did a really good job. You know, Marky Mark, <laughs> his acting was a good. You know, it wasn't, you know, huh, what, you know, who? You know, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like that. The other people, like Ben Foster, I've always liked as an actor. Emil Hirsch, I like. You know, I thought the acting was good. I thought the direction was good. Overall, I think they did a really good job with this movie. Because, you know, sometimes when they do films like this, based on true stories and everything, sometimes they just go in one direction. Sometimes they go in another direction. But, no, I thought they, they did a really good job with this movie. So, Lone Survivor. And next, I'm going to review another film, American Sniper. Um, American Sniper, again, similar film, you know, having to deal with Navy SEALs and, you know, the uh, the recent, you know, the, the current war that we're fighting in. Again, both based on books, based on true stories. Um, this one, another really good film. I really enjoyed this film. Again, not a movie that I would watch all the time because it's sad and it's depressing because Chris Kyle got killed for no reason 
You know, no reason whatsoever this guy got killed. He was just trying to help somebody, and he got killed. You know, and it's very, very sad. It's very, very de depressing, you know, and it's just, it's a tough, you know, both of these, both movies are tough to sit through. You know, I would say, uh, equal, equally tough to sit through because, I mean, you know how these movies are going to end. You know what's going to happen because it's, tr it's real life. It's a true story. But... American Sniper, I will say I liked more than Lone Survivor. Um, although I had more issues with it, to be honest with you. The movie itself, not you know, the other stuff. Just the movie itself, excuse me. But I, I will say I enjoyed American Sniper better because, first of all, it's directed by Clint Eastwood. So I like Clint Eastwood as an actor, as a director. He can do it all. He's great, you know. Um, I've always been a huge fan of Clint Eastwood. He's always been one of my favorites. Um, so I, that has the movie going for it. And honestly, I like Bradley Cooper better as an actor than Mark Wahlberg. I know Bradley Cooper is known for The Hangover, but he's done some good dramatic performances. He was in Silver Linings Playbook, which I've never seen, but I'd like to. Um, you know, he's done... You know, obviously comedy. He was in Wedding Crashers. He was in the Hangover films. He's done action films. So Bradley Cooper is a jack-of-all-trades, and that's why I like him. I mean, Mark Wahlberg... Okay, Mark Wahlberg has done, you know, dramatic films, action films, such as this. He's done comedy. But again, it's like, you know, apart from being in, like, three and four movies a year... And then, well, you hear he's a douchebag and stuff. Like, Bradley Cooper, I've heard nothing but nice things and good things about him. And, you know, yeah, he'll do a couple movies a year, but it's spread out and stuff. Like, you know, this came out in January. And then, like, six months later, you know, uh, Transformers came out. And then six months after that, you know, it's like they're spread out. You know, Bradley Cooper, I mean, his movies are spread out. He'll only do, like, two movies a year, three movies a year that are spread out. You know, not like Mark Wahlberg. It's like every couple months, he's got a movie out. But, oh well. But American Sniper, <clears throat> like I said, I did enjoy it more because the things I just mentioned. I thought Bradley Cooper did a really good job. Um, really enjoyed his performance. I thought, you know, he kept in the character through the whole movie, you know, because he kept the accent and, you know, kept the look of Chris Kyle and everything, which I thought was really good. I thought he did a really good job. And, uh, Sienna Miller, I liked her. I thought she did good as his wife. Um, this movie was a little bit, uh, better paced in my opinion, although it is longer. This one is, this one's two hours and 12 minutes, and I think Lone Survivor is two hours. Yeah, this one is two hours. I thought, you know, because Lone Survivor, it was, it was a little bit slower because they were setting it up, then you had the action, and then it kind of slowed down, and then you had the ending. But I thought American Sniper was paced better because you had the beginning where it was showing him as a kid, and then there was the thing with his girlfriend, and then he went into the Navy, then he met his wife, went through SEAL training, got married, went to war, came home, went back, came home, went back. Like I thought the pacing was a little bit better because there was always something going on. Um, that's just my opinion. That's just what I saw when I watched the film. Um, I thought the action sequences were good. I thought they were handled pretty well. The biggest problem I had with American Sniper is the CGI was just... It was worse than Lone Survivor. Like, Lone Survivor only really had the one part with the helicopter where the CGI looked bad. American Sniper, it was like the CGI was everywhere. Like... When the guy is drilling the kid's head, like, it just looks so bad. You know, other parts of the movie, like, the CGI just looked really, really bad. Like, the sandstorm at the end looked awful. A lot of the other special effects shots looked terrible. And also the shaky cam. Like, there was just a lot of really bad shaky cam in this film. And I don't know if it's because Clint Eastwood is getting older and he's just not working as hard or he's working less on his movies than usual, or he's like, well, this is new, this is popular, this is what I'm going to do. I don't know what's going on with Clint Eastwood's movies. I think he's kind of lost his touch a little bit in terms of directing. 
because the movie he did last year, Jersey Boys, which was a film that I really enjoyed, one of my favorites of the year, there was a lot of really bad CGI in that in parts. And then there was a part in the movie when, I know I'm going off topic here, but there was a part when they're recording uh, Walk Like a Man and they dubbed in the drums, like the drum intro, for those that have heard the song know what I'm talking about, um, instead of playing it live on film. Like, I just thought that was really shady. Like, it's like, come on, Clint. Like, you are the man. You shouldn't be doing shit like this. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just, like, the whole time I'm watching this movie, I'm like, well, you know, looks kind of bad. Ah, uh, you know, it's like, could have been done a little bit better. So, yeah, that... I mean, I had more, like, it's kind of weird. Cause like I said, I like this better than Lone Survivor. I just thought it was a better movie, but I had more issues with it, if that makes any sense. It's like an oxymoron, but it's, I'm just being honest, you know, I'm, I'm just being true. But, oh well. Um, but yeah, that was just, like, the biggest issues I had with the film. Um, other than that, I liked it. I enjoyed how they really just kept, to the story of him being a Navy SEAL and him just going to war and coming home. Because I know that before the movie came out, because, okay, here's what's going on. And here's the thing I don't like about the whole, this thing and Chris Kyle. You know, when the book came out, American Sniper, you know, he went on shows and talked about it. I know he did uh, some reality show with Dean Cain. It was like, I don't remember what it was called, but there would be, like, actors teamed up with military people, and they would, like, train, and I know he did that, because I remember seeing clips of that, and I like Dean Cain, and I know Dean Cain said a lot of things about Chris Kyle that were very nice and everything, which is cool, um, which I'll get more to that in a minute, um, but it's like people were jumping on the bandwagon, and I know they do that because they did it with this movie, but this movie it was less. With American Sniper, it was more, and it was more annoying. Um, you know, I know when the book came out, people were reading it, and like, oh my god, like, Chris Kyle, like, I want to meet him, and then, unfortunately, he died, and then the movie came out, and again, people were like, oh my god, like, this is so, like, we need to know everything about this, and we need to post about this, and blah, 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 like, I hate, excuse me, I hate that shit. So everybody was, like, jumping on the bandwagon, because, like I said, the book came out, and... I had heard some things about Chris Kyle, like I had heard who he was, like he was obviously, you know, a sniper, a Navy SEAL, and I know my dad read the book, and my dad was telling me certain things, and like some of the stuff I didn't believe, because I know like in his book he wrote that he was assigned by the government to sit on top of buildings and shoot looters during Hurricane Katrina, I don't think any of that ever happened. I mean, I don't see that happening. So I know that was in the book. The whole thing about Jesse Ventura, for those that don't know, apparently Chris Kyle and Jesse Ventura got into a fight at a bar, but apparently it didn't happen, and apparently it did happen, and then, like, he tried suing the family after he died, and I, I don't know the whole thing there, but I'm glad that the movie kept just with the whole, th the idea of this guy is a sniper and, and a Navy SEAL and in Iraq and Afghanistan and this, he's just doing his job. And I'm glad that that's all they did with it. I'm glad they didn't really take liberties uh, with the story because they could have painted it a completely different way. Same with this movie. I'm glad they stuck just with the story because sometimes the facts get twisted and then things like that get put in and people are like, well, fuck that guy because that's not right and... I'm glad they just stuck with the idea of what they were trying to accomplish here was to tell this guy's story. So I'm glad that was in there. That made perfect sense. Um, but I just don't like how people, you know, again, jumping on the bandwagon, you know, oh my God, Chris Kyle, and although I never read the book and I only saw the movie and, and all that shit, I just don't like all that when people act like this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. But I'm glad that... Because with Lone Survivor, the media kind of always hyped it up. I'm glad that they didn't really hype it up with the media. Like, you know what I mean. Like, click here to see how he died. Or click here to read the story. Like, they didn't do all that shit with American Sniper. Which is, which was nice. I really 
they were very respectful to the family, and that was great. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy American Sniper. The action scenes, you know, basically it was just him taking guys out. You know, there was the shootout where they went into that safe house and found the guns. I like that. There was the ending in the sandstorm. Again, really just shitty CGI, really shitty effects. But, I mean, other than that, it was decent. Like, the parts before that were decent. You know, decent action. Um, you know, Clint Eastwood, I think the guy has just lost his touch. You know, I think he's just lost a step. And I don't know if he plans on directing again or plans on directing another movie soon. But hopefully he'll get it back. Because, like I said, Jersey Boys that came out last year, there was just some shitty CGI. But this film, you know, there was shitty, really shitty CGI. There was shaky cam, all kinds of stuff, you know. But and I know everyone complained about the scene with the baby because in that scene, like, Chris Kyle's holding his daughter, but it's a, it's a dummy because apparently the kid that was supposed to be in that scene, like, the parents never showed up. I don't know, whatever, who cares. I remember even noticing that when I watched it. I didn't see this one in theaters. I actually got a uh, download of this, and it was actually a screener copy. So the, it was perfect quality. And I watched it with my mom and the girl that I used to date. And yeah, and I haven't seen, I haven't actually watched this yet, the Steel Book. I have not watched this. Uh, my brother watched it because he didn't get a chance to see it in theaters. But I have not sat down and watched it yet. But again, you know, it's not a movie that I'm going to watch all the time because it's just, it's a depressing film. It's a sad film. You know, the guy came home. And was doing good things, you know, he was overcoming his PTSD and he was trying to help people and he got killed for no reason, you know. It's very unfortunate, it's very sad and that's just terrible. It really is that the guy went overseas for all that time, never, I mean, you know, of course he got injured and things happened. But he survived that and he came home and he got killed, you know, it's just, it's awful. It's terrible. But yeah, uh, you know, yeah, again, I like this one more, had more problems with it, but oh well. But I enjoyed both films, like I was, you know, at the, I was planning on at the end. Well, which one did I like better? I kind of already gave that away. But yeah, I thought that, I was going to say, I, I don't know. Uh, American Sniper I thought was a better film. I just thought that uh, Bradley Cooper did a better job. I enjoyed the direction by Clint Eastwood, although I had more issues than Lone Survivor with it. But overall, I think both films are really good. If you haven't seen them yet, check them out because they're really good movies. Um, like I said, they're, they are depressing. They are sad. So it's not a movie that you're going to go in and expect everybody to be happy at the end and win and it's over with. Cause it's not that kind of film. Um, but yeah. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this double feature review, um, just a little bit different, just trying to do something different for the channel. Uh, stay tuned because next I will be doing another double feature review for The Equalizer and John Wick. Um, another uh, two other films that were similar came out around the same time, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I hope that you guys will enjoy the next one. So anyway, I will see you guys next time. Take care and bye-bye.